And it's good to be back in Israel, even in these difficult days, especially in these difficult days. This is my fourth visit to Israel as Secretary of Defense and my second time since October 7th. And I know that Israel has been profoundly changed from where you were on October 6th. So I'm here with a clear message. America's support for Israel's security is unshakable. And Israel is not alone. At a time of mourning, a real friend shows up. And I know how terrible these days have been for the Israeli people. And I know that October 7th touched everyone in this small democracy. So let me again extend my deepest condolences to Minister Gadi Eisenkot, who has been sitting Shiva for his 25-year-old son and mourning his nephew after they both fell in Gaza. On October 7th, Hamas committed one of the worst atrocities in the history of modern terrorism. As President Biden said, it was an act of sheer evil. Innocent young people at a concert were massacred. Parents were shot in front of their children. Women were sexually assaulted. Toddlers and Holocaust survivors were taken hostage. And for Hamas, that was just the beginning. Hamas has clearly and loudly spelled out its vision of the future. And it is to repeat October 7th over and over and over again. No country should tolerate such a danger. And Israel has every right to defend itself against a fanatical terrorist group whose stated purpose is to murder Jews and eradicate the Jewish state. Hamas is still holding hostages, including American citizens. Hamas embeds itself and hides itself behind innocent Palestinian civilians. Hamas does not speak for the Palestinian people. And Hamas is determined to doom both Israelis and Palestinians to an unending cycle of suffering and strife. So make no mistake, Hamas should never again be able to project terror from Gaza into the sovereign state of Israel. And we will continue to work together for a safer, more secure future for Israel and a brighter future for the Palestinians. The United States will keep pushing relentlessly for the safe return of hostages in Gaza. And we will continue to help Israel in its efforts to bring them all home. Thanks to the personal leadership of President Biden, we helped to broker a deal that got out more than 100 hostages. But this remains a top priority for the United States from President Biden on down. And we will continue to do everything that we can to bring home every man, every woman, and every child seized by Hamas. Now, the United States has been clear and consistent since Hamas started this war on October 7th. Democracies are stronger and more secure when we uphold the law of war. And I've, as I've said, protecting Palestinian civilians in Gaza is both a moral duty and a strategic imperative. So we will continue to stand up for Israel's bedrock right to defend itself. And we will also continue to urge the protection of civilians during conflict and to increase the flow of humanitarian aid into Gaza. That's important as Israel fights to dismantle the Hamas ter uh, terrorist infrastructure in Gaza. And it will also be crucial for our work with our allies and partners after the fighting stops. Now, we're working to ensure that this conflict does not escalate beyond Gaza. But as we are driving to stabilize the region, Iran is raising tensions 
by continuing to support terrorist groups and militias. Attacks by these Iranian proxies threaten the region's citizens and risk a broader conflict. Of course, the United States does not seek war, and we urgently call on Iran to take steps to de-escalate. Now, in my meetings today, I also discuss the need to take urgent action to stabilize the West Bank. Attacks by extremist settlers against the Palestinians in the West Bank must stop. And those committing the violence must be held accountable. Now, we know that the past 72 days have been some of the most painful days in Israel's history. But it would compound this tragedy if all that was waiting for the Israeli people and your Palestinian neighbors at the end of this awful war was more insecurity, fury, and despair. As I've said, Israelis and Palestinians have both paid too bitter a price to just go back to October 6th. So I discuss past ways today toward a future for Gaza after Hamas based upon the clear principles laid down last month by my friend, Secretary Blinken. Israelis and Palestinians both deserve a horizon of hope. So the United States continues to believe, as we have under administrations of both parties, that it is in the interest of both Israelis and Palestinians to move forward toward two states, living side by side in mutual security. Now, we know how hard that is, especially after October 7th. But ongoing instability and insecurity only play into the hands of Hamas. So we must think together about what lies beyond this terrible season of terror and war. And as we do, the United States will remain deeply committed to the security and self-defense of the state of Israel. As John F. Kennedy said in 1960, America's friendship with Israel is a national commitment. That was true then, and it's even truer now. The United States will remain Israel's closest friend in the world. And as I've said repeatedly, our support for Israel's security remains unshakable, and it always will.